Hey everybody, Nikolai here from rcgroups.com, and today we're going to take a quick look at the Eishin VRD2 5.8 GHz FPV diversity goggles with DVR. That's a mouthful, um, but it, it retails for uh, $100 on banggood.com, and uh, as you can see, it is a single screen unit. Uh, it's got a 5 inch screen running 800 by 400 resolution. Uh, in the box you will get the goggles with the two antennas. It is a circular polarized mushroom antenna and a patch antenna, which I'm happy to see that instead of the, uh, the normal little whip antenna that's included. But other than those two things, uh, there is a 2200 milliamp pack back here on the back. And then they include the charger for it. Uh, and they also include a wet and dry wipe to clean off any dust or dirt off the lens. And then a little tiny pamphlet here, which isn't much good other than to show you uh, what some of the buttons do. So like I said, it does have diversity on it, and there's a couple little uh, LEDs here on the top that it'll show you which, uh, which antenna is getting the strongest signal, which one it's using. And then on top here as well is the little slot for the micro SD card. Um, on the side you'll see a little button here and there's one on each side that is to adjust the magnification lens on the inside so if I can get the glare just right and then slide it back you'll see that the that the lens is moving just a little bit um, unfortunately these this is only set up for uh, nearsighted people so if you're farsighted sorry you're probably going to be out of luck without some modifications um, some people have bought some reading glasses and uh, mounted them inside to, to adjust it for their, uh, for their eyes, which seems to work out for them. But unfortunately, it did not work out for me as I am farsighted. So uh, as far as the fit and comfort goes, it's, it's okay. It's not great. Uh, there was a lot of light leakage around the sides here. Um, there was a lot of weight being pressed on my cheeks, uh, my cheekbones right around here. And so I think maybe another layer of foam uh, would help out with that. There is, you know, it's a, I want to say it's about a, a quarter inch, three eighths of an inch foam here. And I think another layer of, of foam would have helped out a lot with that light leakage. So in the back, of course, you have adjustable straps and then you have your battery in the back here. Um, the battery does tend to slide. So uh, to help that, I would suggest putting up uh, sticking on a piece of fuzzy velcro on, on the battery itself and that should link it into the into the battery strap here. So uh, other than diversity and the DVR, um, just wanted to note that these antennas are RPSMA connectors which is not your typical one so if you're going to plan on changing these out just be aware of that. Um, Another feature is that the battery has, uh, or the unit has a built-in uh, battery voltage detector. So if it does get below seven volts, it'll start beeping at you. So that is nice to know. Um, another thing I noted was there is no AV in or out anywhere on here. Um, so if you're going to plug this into a monitor or something like that, that's just not going to work out for this. And then finally, there is a, tripo or a tripod mount down here on the bottom. Uh, you can mount it to any tripod uh, standard, I think it's eighth inch or quarter inch uh, post. So that's about it for the actual uh, case features. You can see the buttons up here on the front for uh, frequency and channel and then to activate your DVR, turn the power on the monitor on and off. But I'll get into some of that in just a second here while I turn on the battery and uh, turn on my camera source. All right, so I went ahead and plugged in my Tiny Whoop and set the goggles to the correct channel. And as you can see uh, out the window here, we've got a nice North Carolina fall day. Um, so we'll start off by kind of showing you what's on here. There's nothing on the, the actual screen right now as far as uh, any inputs or anything like this. But if I hit the cam DVR button, you'll see on the top right, it switches to AV2. On the top left, you'll see that it has the little uh, camera icon. And up on top, you'll see the uh, microphone and the micro SD symbols there to let me know that I have the SD card plugged in and uh, that it will be recording sound. On the bottom right, you'll see the clock is already going because I might have actually hit the record button. So I'll hit stop and you'll see that there's a clock down there. Uh, once I hit the the play button again, it'll start recording, and now it's recording a new file, so that timer will start over. 
Now you'll notice, um, I won't be able to show it very well in the video here, but if you stay on this mode and you fly uh, with, with this DVR screen, it will be kind of laggy. So if you are recording, you'll want to switch back to AV1, which is your live feed. Um, while, so while you're flying, you'll want to make sure you're, that you're in, uh, in AV1. All right, and so while you're in the DVR mode, you can long press the uh, stop button, I believe it is, to get to the menus for your DVR options. And in here, you can pick from your recording size, whether you want to record your sound. And um, I believe video time is your maximum uh, time that it'll record to a file. If you long press that again, you'll go to a second screen of options. Not entirely sure what all of this does, um, but here you can see at least the TV output you can select from NTSC to uh, PAL. If you long press it again, the menu should go away. So also on the DVR functionality here, if you long press the uh, rewind button, it'll go in here and access the files. So you'll see here that we have five files stored. And the one we're looking at right now is four seconds long. You can see the format. Um, and I believe if I long press the stop button, it'll go into a menu here where we can delete individual files um, right from the goggles instead of having to do it later on through your card reader. And then we can long press hold the rewind button again to get out of this. And now we're back to the DVR screen. To get out of the DVR screen again, you hit the cam DVR button on the far left if you're uh, looking through the goggles. And now we're back to the live view. And from here, we can hit the menu button to get to our brightness, uh, contrast, color, hue, zoom options, and your language. So there is also a power button right in the middle here, and all this does is turn the screen off. The goggles are still on, as you can see by the uh, the channel numbers here. So it will conserve a little power, maybe if you're just stepping away for a couple of minutes. Um, but if you press this power button right here, it'll just turn the screen off, but the goggles are still active. To actually uh, turn the turn all the power off, you have to disconnect the battery plug on the on the battery pack. So to explain just a little bit of what you saw on through the goggles, I was pressing the cam DVR button to switch from the live view to the DVR mode. You press this button here to start the recording, and then you can press this button here to, uh, if you long hold it, it'll go into the playback mode, and then this will open up your menus uh, within the DVR mode. This menu button is for the brightness, contrast, color, all those options, and of course you have your frequency and channel options here. Okay guys, here's the flight footage that I promised earlier. Um, you should be able to see, clearly see the red lights, they're finish, flashing back and forth, and it'll predominantly be on the left uh, mushroom antenna as I'm flying around, just around in the general airspace of, the, of our field. And uh, as we start testing the range right about now, um, this is facing off to the to the right of, of where the goggles are facing, or at least where the patch antenna is facing. So uh, it's expected that it'll stay on the mushroom, which it is right now, and then we'll head back to the field. And then in a second, we're going to turn to the right, and this is the direction that the patch antenna is facing. Um, so we'll test that range, and we'll expect it to change over to the patch antenna here in just a second as it gets out of the range of the mushroom antenna. And there it did. It switched over just as expected as it got out of range. Um, so we're, as you can see, we're getting pretty good range out of this uh, out of this receiver. Really impressed with that. And the diversity is clearly working as expected. And now it's back to the mushroom antenna as expected. Uh, you know, as we're back in the range of uh, you know right over the the airfield here. And now we're getting behind the. Um, behind the goggles and it should stay it's going to flip back and forth but it should stay mostly on the mushroom antenna um, as we're behind where the goggles are facing 
So that's just a quick look for you at how things are working on the field in a, on a, with a live remote feed. Um, just wanted to show that real quick to you to, to show you how well the diversity is working on these goggles and it is working quite well. So I'm pretty impressed with that. So that about wraps it up for these Isheen VR D2 goggles. Uh, again, they do retail for around $100 on banggood.com. Um, they are a budget goggle, so you know, you're not going to get a, an excellent case quality, you're not going to get a sleek look. Um, they're just going to do its job. And uh, doing its job as far as the DVR recording, uh, my DVRs have come out pretty nice. Earlier versions I know had a blackout issue. If the signal got low, it would actually black out in the DVR, but not in the goggles. Um, but I believe they've fixed this in the newest versions, which is the, the version that I've got. So I haven't had any problems with that. But uh, again, this is a budget goggle, so uh, you get what you pay for. But these definitely do serve the purpose. Um, again, if you're wearing uh, glasses, don't don't uh, expect that you'll be able to wear these because the, the width of the goggle itself is actually very narrow. Um, <clears throat> and if you are nearsighted, these, this adjustable slide uh, magnification lens might work for you, but it might not. So again, it's just kind of a trial by, by fire kind of thing. But uh, give these a, a look if you're looking into some, some goggles with, uh, with diversity and DVR. It's not a bad option, it's not a great option, but check it out for yourself and see what you think. And as always, look for my full review on rscgroups.com. Thanks guys for tuning in to this review and keep your wings level.